With that, I'd like to introduce our first speaker. Tremendous presentation coming up. His name is, uh, Ni oh, sorry, God, I almost went to the uh, wrong set here. His name is Michael Birch from Bebo. Michael, please, if you'll take the stage. Thank you. Thank you. I'm the uh, first bad haircut to be paraded in front of you. Thank you, Bob. Uh, you speak very loudly. I might not be quite as loud as Bob, but I'll, I'll do my best. It's, uh, it's already a little bit like watching Olympic tennis, this. Uh, great venue, a little bit wide. I don't know if any of you know, but they actually built this venue for the Olympics. Um, the British government will go to any end to, uh, to promote Britain during the Olympics, and it's all solid gold, so well done, Britain. Um, growth hacking. All right, that's a London saying for hello. Keep it, keeping it British here. Yeah? Uh, Olympic trampoline, this is what I'm going to see straight after this, uh, this speech. Uh, rather excited. It would be much more exciting if Britain were in it, but you know, I'm doing my best to support the country. This is uh, my children on a trampoline. They haven't quite worked out that you meant to jump on it, uh, but they have turned it into a great social utility, so they're already thinking about social networking there. So growth hacking. I'm talking about growth hacking. Uh, it's what I do apparently, which I'll explain in a minute. My, my internet journey started in 99 in, in Richmond, England, many of you will know it. Uh, my wife and I both left our ridiculously overwell-paid jobs working for very boring insurance companies and uh, decided that we'd do the internet. And I thought, well, HTML can't be hard. can already spell it, so soon learn it. And uh, three years later, I hadn't made a single penny. I told my wife, give me three months. If we're not making money after three months, we'll go and get jobs again. Three years, not a penny. Uh, but it's like waiting for a bus. You think one's coming soon. So I started out with, with self-funding. Didn't think anyone would give me any money, probably rightly so. And thought, well, I can't, I've got time. I can afford time. Remortgaged the home twice during those three years. But I haven't got any money, so I can't spend any money advertising. I can't market anything. But the only thing I was interested in was building mass consumer internet sites. I wanted millions of users to come onto our websites and use them. So I thought, well, I have to get members without spending any money. And the term vile marketing was being banded around. This was back in 99. And I thought, well, that's it. I just got to build a vile website that everyone loves, and they're going to tell all their friends, and they'll all come. So we started thinking about viral ideas. We tried a few different things. And you know, it was a fairly new term then, vile marketing. And then very recently, um, it's, it's had the word growth hacking applied to it. Um, Viral marketing, I don't think it was very, very cool. It, people called me a viral marketeer. I thought I was one of the three musketeers with a venereal disease. <laughs> Wasn't a cool image, so didn't tell anyone that's what I was. But about a year ago, they started this term growth hacking, or growth hackers. So people started calling me a growth hacker. I thought, this is great. You know, who doesn't want to be a hacker? It's like base jumping for internet geeks. You know, it's going to be cool. So now, now I've actually finally come out of the closet, started talking about what I've done for the last uh, was it 13 years now? So growth hacking is, is a thing that's been given a label. It's been around for a long time. And it's really about, it is about vile marketing. It's about getting members to join for nothing. But it's the process in which you do that, which is, which is iterating consistently, analytics, coming up with that new ideas, trialing them, seeing if they work, trying new ideas. And I did this for years and years on end until after about three years, we finally got a website that, that did actually start working. And now, today, companies have growth teams. So they typically call them growth team. People who work in them are growth hackers. Uh, Facebook has a very large growth team. And all they do is focus on growth. So they're kind of the replacement in, in some ways or an alternative to the marketing department where they're, they're working out how to grow the business, but without giving them a big budget for marketing, working out how to get, people to, get other people to join. So I thought it'd be useful to, to talk about some examples of what we did in those early years and how, how we succeeded. Um, our first website that we did get viral wasn't Bieber, it was a website called Birthday Alarm, which we launched initially in 2001 and got viral about a year later after a lot of growth hacking. Um, and the key element of viral growth is what's called a viral loop. And a viral loop is where you, you, people get other people to join, um, very simply. So the viral loop for Birthday Alarm is we were a birthday reminder website. And if you want to be reminded of birthdays, you need to know when your friend's birthdays are. So we would get people to send them 
sales send their friends an email saying, when is your birthday? If you think about it, the only birthdays before Facebook at least that you knew was probably your, your, your parents and your siblings and your children. Um, so you send an email to as many friends as you could. Uh, the friends would click on a link and enter their birthday on birthdaylarm.com. So we got them to the website. The next page asked them if they wanted to be reminded of their friend's birthday. So a surprising number said yes. And then they would register and then email their friends to enter their birthday. So we went back to step one. Very, very simple example of a vile loop, but very effective. And obviously with anything in growth hacking, you've got to be able to measure it and you've got to know what you're trying to measure. And the ultimate goal that you're trying to measure, the thing you're trying to get higher is the vile coefficient. And a vile coefficient is very simply if, if someone gets Site, joins the site, and on average, each person who joins gets one other person to join. That's a VAR coefficient of one. If each person gets two people to join, it's a VAR coefficient of two. So you go from one to two to four to eight. And if it's a VAR coefficient of a half, it goes from one to a half to a quarter. So you can see there's this interesting tipping point, a very small difference between very successful and a complete failure. You either die or you grow exponentially. Um, and so if you can break that vial coefficient down to its constituent components, um, I'm doing, again, by way of example, if, if someone's to join the site and email 100 people, 80 people of those may actually receive the email, might go into spam folders. 60 of those read it, if the subject line's interesting enough. Uh, 20 people may click on the link. 10 people may enter their birthday. Three of those may then register and one person may email their friend. So this is breaking that vial coefficient of one down into its components. Um, now you can see, if you can improve any element of this, this is where the growth hacking starts coming in. If you can get, instead of 20 people clicking on the link, you can get 30 people clicking on the link, you've now got a vial coefficient of 1.5 and you're explosively successful business. Uh, and you may try different versions of words for the wording for the email, so you have 10 different versions of email, you send it out with 10 different links in each, you track how many people are clicking through on each, you find the most effective at converting, and then you put that live and you come up with 10 more versions to trial against that, and you just keep doing it again and again and again. It comes a little laborious, you're spending all your time thinking of new ideas, implementing those ideas, and then measuring and trialing and then doing again. But the, the process of this, it took us quite a long time with Birthday Alarm till we were actually viral, is, is incredibly effective. And this is the growth hacking part. You want that graph. You want crazy growth. So to give an example of the thing that really for us was we, we, all those different steps that I, I showed are things that we tweet. This, this was maybe the most interesting because all of those points you were losing people. You had 100 people emailed and then you lost, 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 lost. You kept getting down to less and less people. But the exciting part is if you can get people to email as many people as possible, if you can get them to email hundreds of people, then you start with a really big number. It's much easier to stay at one when you get to the bottom. So we started, and we, we, we weren't viral at all. We, um, we, you, you could enter your friend's email addresses on the website. After about three, people were bored of entering it, and they gave up. So the average people invited was three. We then evolved and said, well, instead of entering email addresses, let's have the, the actual wording of the email in a box, and you can copy and paste it, put it in your email client, and use your email client to send it to all your friends. You could select all if you, cho if you chose. Sorry. And from that, where we had no growth, we suddenly went and we were getting 10,000 members a day from this simple copy and paste change. And the interesting thing is that change took about an hour to put live, it took a few months to come up with the idea after trying lots of other things. So the, the actual point of success is incredibly trivial, but coming up with that is quite difficult. And then we, the major breakthrough for us was we, we, we came up with this idea that you could import your address book. Um, you see it a lot on websites now. Um, I'd sold an earlier business to another business that were actually doing this, unsuccessfully, ironically. Um, and I, I was inspired by that idea, and I put it live on Birthday Alarm. It took 24 hours to develop and put live again. Super quick to do. You enter your Hotmail, Hotmail and Yahoo were the big email clients at the time, Hotmail, email and password, import all your friends' addresses, and then spam the hell out of them, was the idea. And on average, people were sending it to 100 people. So we went from, I don't know what it was with copy and paste, because interestingly, we couldn't measure it but it's certainly a lot less. 24 hours after we went live, we had 100,000 new members. The day before, we'd had 10,000. And that next year, we averaged 150,000 members a day. And we were ecstatic. We were oh, we've done it. This is it. We were waiting for Hotmail to block us, because we thought this is probably illegal um, at worst, and, uh, and they're not going to like it at best. So we were waiting for the block. They never blocked us, ever. And they've never blocked anyone since, not, not permanently, at least. 
And so we just kept going. We didn't tell anyone about it because we thought, we've got this. If everyone starts doing it, it's going to stop working. So we didn't tell anyone about it. And then about a year later, we started seeing sites doing it. I was surprised how long it took. And then I saw MySpace when they did it. And then they didn't announce, hey, this is successful, but their, their traffic shot up as soon as they did it. It was quite interesting to see. Uh, and then we celebrated by having a uh, pint of Guinness. Um, we fired the barman because it was terribly uh, poured Guinness. Very disappointing. And then, then we applied it all to Bebo. So a couple of years after Birthday Alarm was successful, we did, we did launch Bebo. This is a rocket which is meant to simulate um, taking off in, in, into space. Um, I think visually it's quite an interesting rocket. I think aerodynamically it's probably got something to be desired, but nonetheless it's symbolic. Um, it just shows that if you over-design something visually, it doesn't necessarily make it a, a better website. So with Bebo, we, we, um, we, we'd spent three years now experimenting all these trials. We had a good intuition for what did and didn't work, and we put it all live on this new site, and it actually started not, a, not as a social network as such, but as a self-updating address book. So instead of asking for people's birthdays, you'd ask for their contact details. And we put it live, a uh, very simple website. Again, only took a couple of weeks to actually develop the first version. And after nine days, we'd hit a million members with this brand new website. We were two-thirds the size of MySpace in reach at the time. And uh, interestingly, out of those million members, two people ever came back. And sadly, I was one of them. So we had one other person came back. And then, and then it struck me, you know what, you can get these things incredibly vile, but if it's not a good product and it's not engaging, then no one ever uses the bloody thing. So it was exciting and then pointless at the same time. So then I spent six months actually developing Bebo to be something meaningful. And, um, and so my focus went completely from vile marketing, or growth hacking as it's now called, to, uh, to how do you get a highly engaged website. And after six months, we had the most highly engaged social network, most time spent per user. And, and so that, that was uh, finally successful. And uh, then, then AOL very kindly took it off our hands a few years ago. I've been thanking them ever since. Um, <laughs> so in conclusion, Britain's a great place to do business. I'd highly recommend it. And I always think it's good to end on a quote, because it makes you sound intelligent and well-read, and um, which obviously I am. And th this is a quote that I learned 24 years ago. I was, I was in a, my student bar in uh, Imperial College in London, and um, I'd, I'd been having drinks with a guy, maybe a few too many. They were Guinnesses. And, um, and, I, and I said goodbye, and he, and he said to me, catch you on the rebound, which I thought was inspirational. <laughs> Thank you very much.